everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Iris Global Green Room Quarantine Podcast. Uh, as always, I got people that I know and love that uh, that some of you know and some of you are about to know. Uh, but these guys, uh, today's guests, uh, Amy and David Lancaster, are two really, really, really good friends uh, that are based out of Jackson, Mississippi. I almost in Jacksonville. I don't know why. That's in Florida. Uh, two different places. They're based out of Jackson, Mississippi, uh, and they are the leaders of We Will Go Ministries, and it's a spectacular uh, ministry that is based, uh, yeah, in the, in the, in the, I mean, am I allowed to say ghetto? Am I allowed to say that? In like the poorest, uh, poorest place in, in downtown Mississippi. And uh, not only are they friends, but I, my my oldest sister and brother in law are also missionaries there with you guys. I've been there multiple times, and uh, not not only that, uh, Amy and David come to Mozambique, and it is well known across all of our harvest schools that uh, Amy and David are two of the favorite speakers. And I thought we'd take a minute and share them with you guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. I know you're going to enjoy this. So, hey, Amy and David, how are you guys? Hey, William. Hey, Will. We're good. We're doing good. We're getting used to the humidity. We're getting more and more humidity. Yeah. It's yeah. super hot where we are, so I've uh, been, we're great. We're I've good. Been, Thank you for having us on, friend. Oh, I love it. We we should have done this a long time ago. We've been, we've actually been to a couple nations together and Mozambique. We've been oh, in the bush yeah. together. I've been to your place. We've you've come and spoken at conferences yeah. uh, around the states with 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 me over the years. Yeah. Um, you guys are are spectacular, and uh, I've been following you guys on you know Instagram lately and watching what you guys are doing. You're planting gardens. You're yeah. David. You're digging holes, and you guys are yeah. in full blown ministry mode, regardless yeah. of what's going on. T- talk to me about that. How how was your response when COVID hit? To you know, do we pull back? Do we wait? Or do we keep serving? T- talk to me about that. Well, um, you know, we've been living among um, the poor here for fifteen years, and so um, we, as a ministry, are considered essential. So a lot of the regulations and stuff um, have not been a huge problem. Um, the the outpouring of of need i just ran downstairs from helping dozens and dozens of people this morning so um as far as the, you know the virus and all that i think um it's opened up lots of even more opportunities if that's possible for what we do every day so we, since we live in the middle of downtown and in the in the middle of the neighborhood we the only thing that we chose not to do just um I don't know. I guess just to try to be honoring to the government and then try to be um, extra, extra. A lot of our, our a lot of our neighbors are really sick, so we've done a lot of more a lot of ministry on the streets like we always have, and going house to house. And our schools being shut down that's been very difficult. Um, I know it has in a lot of places. So the schools being shut down, um, they're not being uh, parents to be able to really help with that. Um, our kids don't have, you know, laptops and things at home. So um, we've just been going house to house every day, which is um, just a lot of extra fun, if yeah. you want to say it that way. And like you said, we're, you know, we've always grown gardens and we're growing food for people that are hungry. And um, so it's been it's been um, it's been really beautiful uh, from our perspective. We're ministering every day um, to people. So, yeah, it's been fun. I mean, fun sounds like a strange word in the middle of, you know, a pandemic, but the opportunities to share the gospel every day have been tremendous and our team has just done fantastic. I've told you that on the phone before, but yeah. it's just been amazing. Yeah. It's been phenomenal how people are open to the gospel and praying for people every day. It's fun. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. that across the board. Yeah. Uh, that people are hungry uh, yep. for the, for the gospel. I've seen it sure. even as I've been out meeting with people and, you know, just crossing paths with people. Just really, really quick before we get too deep, I, I'd love it if you could give a backdrop uh, on your lives and what the heck two super duper white people uh, are doing in the middle. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> uh, what are you guys doing in the middle of uh, of Jackson, Mississippi? How did you get there? Just give us a little bit of your story. Well, we, Amy and I both, uh, we 
grew up in church. We grew up um, loving Jesus. We accepted Christ at a young age. We, you know, the American dream, you go off to college, you get married to a beautiful woman, you have beautiful children, build a house. We did all those things. But really one day uh, we were very involved in our church and we were, we just really were like, there has to be more than this. And so we started reading different books and we went on um uh, several mission trips. We'd gone to Tunisia and North Africa and Egypt, and we'd gone to a lot of Middle Eastern countries that God just really broke our heart that there were so many people in the world who hadn't heard the gospel. A lot of hard and, places. And we were, we were, our biggest dilemma was who's going to bring the food to the next Sunday school party. Yeah. And so we were just Getting like, there, there are all these people who need Jesus. And they were like, Hey guys, we're, we know that y'all are really excited about that, but can you just give everybody else a break? We just want to do life. And so we tell people a lot of times, you know, life happens. A lot of times people aren't doing anything evil. They're just not doing anything. <laughs> and we have challenged a lot of people on our team is that at the end of this COVID-19 virus, you're going to have a story. You just may not have a story worth telling. Yeah. And so. <laughs> okay. God, well, I want you to have a story. And so, um, we really didn't expect something like this. So a lot of people ask us, you know, how did you choose this? And we really did not. The Lord Jesus asked us to do it. And so um, I was telling our new staff, we have a big camp staff upstairs. It wasn't our decision. We were saying, Lord, we'll do anything. Our whole life verse is what God asked Isaiah, who's going to go, who's going to do it, who can I send? And Isaiah said, me, I'll go. Mm. And so obviously our thought process was that would be, what typical missions is that you would go overseas because we love that so much. And we have done that so much, even from when we were very young and our kids were very young, but the Lord told us that Jackson is your Jerusalem. Hmm. And he said, Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And we don't get to pick that. It's all with God. And so he told us very clearly that Jackson, Mississippi is our Jerusalem. And he said, it's on fire. And he said, my people don't care anything about it. And so we said, yes, and we've been downtown for 15 years. Um, and it just started with, it, it's the same this morning. What I've done this morning is exactly the same. It's just more from, we just literally bought a little house in the middle of a crack neighborhood. And with our three little children, we started sharing the gospel, loving your neighbor, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, preaching the gospel. We outgrew our house. We grew out into the yard and we weren't coming to plant a church. It just, God planted it. And then God started sending us people to come and intern and live with us. And God started um, giving us houses to restore and buildings. And so we restored 13 houses in this district. And then God gave us this huge YMCA that we're sitting in. Part of it that we turned into a coffee shop and just a lot of restoration. Just this whole thing about restoring a city, restoring lives, restoring families. And so... Um, I don't know. It's just a matter of saying yes. We just obey him. You know, it looks, it's a lot of fun. We grew up on, on farms in the country, so we know how to grow food for people. And so we grow peas and butter beans and squash and, you know, all that. And it's beautiful. I mean, we gave away just, I mean, lots and lots of families this morning. We're just sharing squash with them and loving them and sharing the gospel and praying over them. And So what we do is a lot more practical than, having like a service. So right. we're, right. we're not really church service as much oriented. We do that once a week, but we're more practical, very, very, very hands on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they're expecting Will to share the gospel or somebody else share the gospel. We want you to share the gospel. Right. And, you know, one of the things that we do with the people who visit here and who uh, live here is we want you to practice, practice your testimony. How many times have you given your testimony? You have a lot, right. but a lot of people haven't. And sure. they haven't really even thought through what they're going to say. One time God asked me that when I was like, why didn't they ask me to speak? And God asked me the question, well, what would you say? And I said, I don't know. He said, that's why they didn't ask you to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> God's real plain, real blunt. Yeah. So practical, yeah. Well, you guys are super practical. Uh, and it's, I know that that shouldn't be refreshing, but it is. Like, there's so much... There's so many different like, hey, let's go here, let's do this, let's pray this, let's let's you know study this thing. But you guys are just you're 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 just in the dirt and you're loving on people. You're getting in there, really, really, really practical. I love that about you. 
the both of you guys. You're just get it done, and yeah. no matter what it takes. Yeah. Um, one of the things, so I, I love listening to your stories because y'all have some humdinger uh, stories over the years. But one, one of the things that I love watching uh, you guys navigate is that culture in Mississippi. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's everywhere, but it seems to be like extra heightened in your stories of like the church doing you, you mentioned it they were worried about you know what the food is going to be after the church yeah. or the color of the carpet yeah. you know and navigating that kind of culture in the south with like hey we're actually doing the gospel cuz cuz you came from that you came from the the church what was that moment what was that like in when when you had like the light turn on basically saying we have to do something we can't just sit here anymore well, I think um, God, well, God gave us three little children right off the bat. Uh, miraculous stories that I should be able to have children, but God gave us three little kids. We have a son and two daughters that are now married and grown, which is weird. But when they were little, we literally looked at each other and we were like, we, and we went to a great church. We loved our church. We served um, every kind of thing from Sunday school. We did the whole deal. David lead worship, being a deacon, all those things. And we look at these little bitty faces and we said, how, it's a true statistic in the South. I don't know if it's the rest of the world, but here, 80% of kids that are raised in church walk away from God when they get grown. Eight out of 10 kids do not continue their faith if they even had one. Mm. And so we looked at each other, not making point fingers at everyone else. And we said, what are we going to do different? What does God want us to, how are we going to raise these kids to know that Jesus is real He's not one color. He's not one denomination. He's not one people group. This doesn't work for some people. And so as young parents, you know, at 25 years old, we were asking ourselves hard questions. And so um, it was very um, it was a very personal conviction that um, we can't just say that this word is true, but that has to look like something. A lot of us say that but it really does have to look like something. And so it just really started on us just taking them on a mission trip. I went to little bitty tiny people. Um, our youngest daughter got saved as a little tiny child in North Africa in a Muslim country. And so the Lord just said, you know, and our, our yes was God will go anywhere. We'll do anything. And um, nothing wrong with church. We love it. We are the church. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with Sunday school. Love it. Great. But then what about the other, you know, days of the week and years of your life and weeks of your life? And we, we wanted them to really grow up knowing that Jesus is really a real savior. And again, like David and I said, we thought that would end up we would be located overseas. But to for that really to be love your neighbor and not be afraid, know your neighbors and not be afraid. And, you know, most of us were raised that you don't really talk to your neighbors. That's kind of strange unless mm -hmm. you love them and you're supposed to love all your neighbors. And so what does that look like? You know, asking, I just really asking ourselves those hard, hard, hard questions. And um, again, thinking it was going to take us overseas, but it really took us to a real, I hate to even use these terms because they're so cliche, but a real lifestyle of seven days a week all the time that actually looks like something tangible. Jesus said, if someone is hungry, you feed him. And that right. doesn't just mean on a mission trip. If someone is naked, you clothe her. Yeah. You don't just go, well, I had a lady come this morning and she walked in crying and she said, I've never been here before. I don't have an appointment. And she was hungry. And I said, hold on, hold on, wait, let's get you something to eat. And she said, well, I hate to ask you, but I have a, I have a funeral tomorrow and I don't have anything to wear. And she was very poor and she had on very dirty clothes. And I was like, stop. Hey, we're going to help you have a seat. And we just loved on her and prayed for her. And we helped her find something to wear to a funeral. Yeah. I didn't say, well, God bless you. You know, here's a great prayer. Here's a prophecy. She needed funeral clothes today. Yeah. And so, you know, she was just weeping, just kindness, just, just showing the kindness to your neighbor today. And, um, well, she was just a, just speechless that I was like, Hey, I'm a Christian. I love you. You're my neighbor. Let me help you. And I've never seen the woman in my life. And she just walked in the door, you know. And so it really should look like something. And yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Th when I was the last time I think I was in Mississippi, I was visiting my sister and you guys. And I I remember Alex and I, that's my sister who's who's with you guys. 
we we drove to I don't know there was a store I really wanted to go and buy something uh, a hunting store so we're there and we're we're talking and they're like hey what are you guys doing here and and oh we, we said we work with it you know my sister said she works in this ministry we will go awesome oh that's great we love ministries we do that and well where where is it located and my sister gave her the address and that woman looked at both of us like we were just crazy. She goes, no, you don't go there, do you? And we're like, yeah. Actually, my sister's like, actually, I have a house there. I live there. And she goes, at night? You go yep. there at night? Yep. Like, I, 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 want the, I want people that are watching to understand, like, this is not uh, a, a safe place. I mean, I heard gunshots while I was there. I heard, I know I, my sister will call me up and tell me about people that have been shot in the street. Or I think the day before I got there, somebody was was killed uh, right, you know, just a block and a half away. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk to us, and I know you guys do this a lot, but talk to us about danger, uh, the, the idea that we want to, maybe the church wants to help and clothe and feed, but, but they're scared, right? There's a yeah. difference. There's something that happened in you guys where you're just like, we just don't care anymore. What, what was that process like? Yeah. Well, I think that we realize that um, in Romans it says that you're to be more than a conqueror. And the idea that God's trying to set you up for a testimony of victory instead of a testimony of defeat. We see, hear so many testimonies of people of all the things God pulled them back out of. But God really wants to give you the testimony of the things he delivered you from. We were reading, we're studying through the Bible with our staff. And this week we're in Daniel and at the part about the Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo getting thrown in the fire. And they said, even if we get thrown in the fire, we're still going to serve you. Mm. So I think a lot of times we you, you do have, you look at it and you know that that's real. The danger is real. You can get shot. You can get sure. robbed and things like that. But even if that happens, God, you told me to do this. Yeah. And so I'm going to do it. And so a lot of people ask us, that, well, how in the world could you do that and you have children? But we know that God's plan was not for us to go there and get killed the first day. I, I really don't think that was God's plan. But, you know, even if, heaven forbid, something terrible happened, God really wants to even use that. We, we see all through Christian history, all these things that were people were martyred and this, that, and the other, and it just spread the gospel. The right. blood of the saints is the seed of the church. Of the church. Yeah. And so we, our goal was not to come here and get killed. But on the other hand, you do, Jesus tells you to count the cost. Yeah. And so, yeah, even this morning, um, there are so many neighbors that they don't know what to believe with the virus. And so some of them, you know, have on a mask and some of them don't and they don't know what to do and all this. And, you know, one of them, I just I mean, she was just so just distraught. And I just said, how are you? And she just broke down crying. And she was like, I mean, I don't know what to think. And I just got up. I said, can I just give you a hug? And she was like. <laughs> I haven't been hugged in months. Aww. Do you mind? And I'm like, do I mind? Come here, you know. <laughs> and so just the love of Jesus should look like something. And she is scared. Yeah. And I just hugged her. And she said, you're not scared to get sick. And I was like, that's ridiculous. No, Jesus was never afraid to get sick. And where does Christ live now? Right. In me, the hope of glory. And that's not being a martyr or being religious or being, that's just practical, right? It's just practical. And she was just, she was just really struggling and really scared and really lonely. And I was like, good gracious, just come here. She needed somebody to hug her and pray for her and love on her. And I don't know, I think, you know, first John four kind of sums it up for me, you know, and it cast out all fear. Yeah. Perfect love cast out all fear. And if if the love that you have for Christ and for people, if it supersedes or takes over, I kind of said that the love of God kind of chases you down mm. and it kind of chases you beyond. You do see it. I mean, we had a really bad situation yesterday with one of our neighbors, you know, and he threatened me and it, he's very, very violent. And I just sat looking at him just praying, you know, Jesus saved this man. Can, can you God, talk about that interaction real quick? Um, well, his name's Jason. Y'all can pray for Jason. And he's very violent and he's very, very difficult. I've known him a very long time and he's on drugs real bad and he's on the streets. He's addicted to crack, he's addicted to crack cocaine. And, um, he comes to see me just about every day. And yesterday he's, he, he stole from us. Um, and he, 
which was stupid because he stole food and we give people food. So anyway, um, but anyway, he, he was very violent. And then he, you know, I saw him down the street and, you know, came at me and threatened to kill me and burn down the house and all those things. And um, I don't know. I just, I just believe that the love of God is bigger than that threat, you know? And a lot of people ask us because we're in the South, you know, aren't you armed? Should you have guns and all this kind of stuff? And we always say the only time you would have a weapon is if you're going to use it. And you don't need to have a weapon unless you're going to use it. You're a hunter. Why, why do you, why you're a hunter? Cause you're actually going hunting. Yeah. That's why you would have a hunting. Well, that's why you would have the stuff. But why would I need that? Right. If you're I mean, yeah. hey, right. And so the point is, is that I was like, I have no intention of harming Jason. And then there are people that say, well, what if he harms you? And my response is, well, Jesus is really big enough. He yeah. really is big enough to protect me. And the fun, it's not funny, but it is funny because he's so dark and he took off his shirt and he's taking his clothes off and he's screaming and threatening and all this. And I'm just looking at him, you know, praying as he's looking at me. I'm like, you're going to be an amazing man of God. And he's threatening to kill me and burn the house down, all that. And I mean, he's like, you know, right here. And I'm just like, you know, the Lord Jesus loves you, Jason. And the Lord has such amazing plans for you, Jason. And you're going to be an amazing man of God in Jesus name. And I've said Jesus name and he just took off screaming down the street, you know. <laughs> and then I just texted all of our team and I was like, I need everyone to just pray for his soul. I'm not praying he gets arrested. I'm not praying he has to suffer. I'm not praying that he moves. I'm not praying that he leaves my neighborhood so we can have mm -hmm. peace. That's horrible. No, he's my neighbor. I want him to get saved and be on our team. I want Jason to get born again and be a missionary here. That would be something fun that God would do. Yeah. You know, God's fun like that. So like David said, you see it. I mean, we're not blind. We see the, the challenges and we see the fear and we see whether it's disease or guns or whatever. But I mean, I just, I just believe that Jesus is bigger. I just really do. And you know, um, we got robbed um, three times last last week in the last 10 days or so. And what I, how I always respond with that is, you know, God, save the ones, save the robbers because you want to save them. Really, you want to save them, you do. And help our hearts not grow hard and angry because bad things happen. And then, Lord, um, why did you allow this to happen? And the Lord always says funny things to me like, well, you know, it was my door. And I allowed it to happen. to my, It's my door. We have this really big building that we're working on across the street and mm -hmm. they tore up the door and stole the air compressor and stuff. And I'm like, well, Lord, why, why didn't you stop it? And then he always answers me with, I thought you wanted to learn how to love people better. I thought you wanted to learn to love your neighbor well. Yeah, That's always his you know, answers. And he's right. God's right. And it is his building. And it's his car and it's his stuff. And if he allows it, then I'm, I'm definitely going to need to learn the lesson. And so we're constantly saying, well, what's God teaching you? What are you learning? Well, I'm learning that I thought I was a very kind person. Apparently, I need some more kindness. <laughs> I thought I was pretty patient. Uh, apparently, I need some more. You know, so I think that's what real Christianity is supposed to be, yeah. is that you're honest in your weaknesses and you're honest that, you know, Lord, I do need more love because that made me angry. Or I do need more love because I do feel afraid and that fear yeah. shouldn't have a place in me, but there it is. I think that's honest praying. Yeah. Do you ever get like tired of it? Cause I don't know in my, in my situation, like I get it. Like I, I understand everything you're saying, but there's also a part of me that's just like, uh, I've done this for with you, Jesus for 20 years or whatever, however long you've been doing it. Like I'm doing good. Like I'm doing good Lord. You know, uh, do you ever get to that point where you're just like, come on. You know, sure. Well, sure. Again, I think everybody does. We we talk uh, we talked with our staff yesterday, and we had some new people coming in. And one of the biggest things that people talk about is they're I'm exhausted or I'm burnt out, yeah. and you hear those terms all the time. When the reality of it is, you have the exact number of hours in a day that I do that anybody does. But the problem is, is we're saying yes to the wrong things. And so a lot of times the people who are able to keep on going, there are certain things you have to say no to. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, even in ministry, sometimes you do have to say, hey, listen, 
just like uh, we're coming up. It's going to be my birthday, so you can wish me an early happy birthday. Friday. Come on, happy birthday. So we're going to take off a day or two and go to the beach. And so so that's something we like to do. And yeah. so we encourage people, what is it? That some people, refuels what, what refuels you? Right. So some people want to be by themselves. Some people want to be with a lot of other people. I don't want to have to tell anybody what to do for two or three days. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, so you, I get, mean, you have to yeah. know, but, the, but you're right. There are times when you do get, I really don't want to do one more thing. Yeah. And the thing is that you, you say yes to the right things right. and you're saying yes to the wrong things. A lot of times when you're getting exhausted Yeah, and the, and the Lord, you know, he got, he got hot, he got tired. Yeah. He sat down at the well, you know, and he was, he was hot. He was hungry. He was tired. And so I always tell our staff, just, you know, let's admit what it is. And, you know, I'll, they'll always laugh at me because I'm like, okay, are you drinking water? Are you eating real food? Are you just eating pop tarts and coffee all the time? That's not real food. <laughs> are you going to bed? Are right. you really resting? Are you spending time in your word? And they'll kind of look at me and they're like, I am. I'm like, no, Facebook shows me that you were posting at one o'clock in the morning. So you're not sleeping. You're up on your phone. And so a lot of it's just real practical discipline of are you getting up and spending time with the Lord? Are you really in his presence? Are you practically repenting? Are you really making excuses for being a jerk? And so we talk about that all the time with our team. It's just like. And, and we've talked to our team a whole lot about having a vision of what they really do want it to look like. Yeah. So a lot of times, too. A lot of people, they say, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. So if you if you and your wife, if you ask your wife, said, hey, let's go out to eat. You all both get in the car and she says, where do you want to go? And you go, it doesn't matter. And then you go, oh, come on, tell me, where do you want to go eat? And she says, I really hadn't thought about it. So you all drive around and you stop at the first place you come to. I hope this isn't hitting home with you. <laughs> but uh, all of a sudden, you neither one of you are real excited about this place. Because neither one of you had a vision of where you actually wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we see a lot, of, especially with young people. But we see a lot with older people, too. Mm -hmm. They have no earthly idea where they want to go. They're mm -hmm. So they're frustrated yeah. with everybody. They're mad with you. They're mad with me. You're, you're not the person I thought you were going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get your report on who I was supposed to be. So yeah. we, we are trying to go through with a lot of people on... What is your vision of what you want this to look like? Mm -hmm. We tell people all the time, you don't dream without pictures. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a dream, there's a picture. Right. But we see a lot of people, they say, I have, well, have you pictured what your life is supposed to look like? Have you pictured what you want your ministry to look like? Yeah. Have you pictured what you want your marriage to look like? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have no picture. And we tell people all the time is that, you can't lead people with a plan. You can only lead people with a dream. A dream a vision. So a dream leads people. A right. plan bores people. Right. Mm. If you're the person with all these steps, yeah. I get so tired of all the steps. We, Where we live, there is a lot of civil rights history, and we tell people that all the time. It's Martin Luther King had a dream, but he didn't have a plan on how to get there. But a lot of people followed him because he had a dream. Yeah. And so a lot of us really need to stop and take a day, take two days, take a, a, a prayer retreat one or two times a year and refocus on the dream that you have and what it is God's really calling you to do. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of people get sidetracked because there, there's an old saying that it says, without a clear destination, any road will get you there. Spending <laughs> time with the Lord and it helps tremendously because it is, it, I hate to use the word tiring or exhausting, but yeah. you know, if you're really going to serve the Lord, I mean, what's the enemy going to try to hit you with? Being discouraged, right. this doesn't work, you know, you're not good at this, this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so sitting with the Lord and like, Lord, you promised, Lord, you said, right. Lord, I don't understand. God, I'm sitting with the word. This is what your word says. I know your promises are real, God. And then we pray for one another, you know. Yeah. We always say we both are not allowed to quit on the same day. So <laughs> you can you can have a bad day today and tomorrow's my day. But I think that's, again, that's just very normal. That's yeah. very normal. And to act like you're super spiritual and you're not ever tired or discouraged or you're not ever, you know, I mean, I think that's just ridiculous. You know, I think that's just not being honest. And yeah. I think, you know, just being honest with yourself and honest with your team and honest with God. I'm like, you know what? I need prayer because like, you know, I had one of my friends yesterday and she used to walk with the Lord. I've, I've been ministering to her for 15 years. I could write 12 books just on her journey with with drugs and abuse and 
she came to my house and her head was split open and she was covered in blood. And, you know, I gave her a bath and gave her my clothes. And I mean, I could, it's crazy. My history with this friend of mine and she is on the street right now, skinny, skinny, skinny back on crack cocaine. And she was banging on the door yesterday morning at seven 30 in the rain. And I just sat and cried. I just sat next to her and cried. And she said, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. It's too, I'm too far gone. Miss Amy, just shut up. She said a lot of other ugly words with it. And I just sat by her and I went and got her a jacket because she was cold. And I gave her a jacket. I went and got her something to eat. And I just sat next to her and I just cried. And she said, just stop that crying. Just stop that crying. And I just sat there and cried. And I'm, I prayed over her. I shared the gospel again. This was a person that has walked with the Lord. I've right. seen her all the way out. And she is all the way on crack again in I mean sitting inside my front door and you know as she chose at the end of that to walk back out in the rain and go get high mm. and actually your sister was sitting there and I just said to her I said you know what Alex theologically I don't know where to put all of that mm. but this is a real person a real human being right now and I said um the Lord sets before her life and death, just like he did me. And I just prayed out loud, God, would you show mercy to yeah. her again? Would you show up, show some mercy and please don't let her die in this condition. And so, and I just, I cried most of the day over that because this is somebody that I, I have ministered to for 15 years and has chosen to go back to crack, you know, and if you're not careful, you'll get to thinking that you're a bad missionary or right. bad Christian, what did I do wrong? The devil's winning and all that's lies, but it's real. Yeah. You know, and you're thinking, Jesus, come on. And the Lord so kindly spoke and he said, Amy, she gets to choose. Your job is to love her well. That's your job is to love her well and to pray without ceasing. And I said, OK, you got to help me do that. <laughs> and he does help me do that. But yeah. it was rough yesterday. It was really rough yesterday. Uh -huh. I cried I'm so sorry to hear that, Amy. Like, you know, I, we, I mean, I'm, I'm here in Reading now, but you know, my years on the field, sure. seeing that, and then still, even in ministry, we, we, we see those issues. But I, it, as I've known you, you know, for these years now, you hear so many of those stories, but you also hear the breakthrough ones, and you also sure. hear the ones where, where, and I've met them. I've met your friends. Sure. You know, sure. as I'm walking down the streets, this is my friend William. Come here. This is my friend, and you introduce me to people that are. Walking with the Lord. I, I love it. Honestly, Amy and David, I, I love what you guys are doing. It's so pure. It's so beautiful. And uh, and yeah, I, I, I mean, it's affected my whole family. Um, so I'm so grateful. My sister met her husband through your ministry, and they really, we, we, we love it. I love it. And I know you guys do a lot of stuff, and, and I, I want to make sure that if you're watching this and you want to connect with... We will go or, or find out more information about them. Or even if you're local, you can, you know, when things open up, you can even go and visit them. Um, how how can they get? Now. We're open now. You are? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, fantastic. Well, how, how, how can people get some more information about you? Easiest way is the website. It's mm -hmm. just wewillgo.org. That's the easiest way. Um, we just rebuilt it recently. So it's, it's really up-to-date info. They can call us. They can email us. We have a great team that'll get back in touch with them. They can come visit. They can come stay. A lot of folks like that. They like to come and stay for a weekend or for a week or two. And they really have a heart to serve the Lord. And they're like what we were, you know, 20 years ago saying, yeah. I really want to do this stuff. But maybe you're not called to Uganda. Maybe <laughs> some people live with us that this is their preparation to go. Yeah. Um, and then other people, they really... They really, I mean, God's heart's broken for America too. You know, there's yeah. 300 million people here. Well, we see a lot of people who come, whether it's to short term, they visit for a week or two, or they bring a team, or just like when we went to Iris, we went to Mozambique the first time. And what God really hit us with is we were all of a sudden around a lot of people that were like minded. Right. Mm. We're like, wow, where where has this been all my life? You know, and so, but God really hit us too is that God didn't just live in Mozambique. And so how could we duplicate some of those kind of things right. in the love of Christ where we live, which is was really one of our inspirations and seeing people come and 
we challenge people that too. You all can't live here, which we would love to have a lot of people, but maybe you're just coming here to learn something. Even the best athletes in the world are looking for a coach. That's right. And so we, we have people come in and we try to coach them in what they're doing so they can go back out and do a better job. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, you guys have a much better idea of how many hundreds of Irish missionaries have gone through there and students and, and you guys have sent people out as well. And yeah. And, and so check out their website. Um, they have a lot of, uh, great information. I was actually on it a couple of days ago. You have a lot of great information on what you're doing and you also have your store. Uh, you guys, you guys, uh, equip people, you train people in, in, in how to work as well. And there's, there's just a ton of amazing, uh, woodworking projects or woodworking products on the website that you guys can buy. I have a house full of a ton of it. I got my Mississippi cutting board. And uh, it, for Christmas, we got we got our Christmas trees made out of the old wood from the from the uh, houses yeah. there. And oh man, like we we love it. And I and I think we have a star. We have a massive star as well. Yeah. But you guys are producing some amazing stuff as Thanks. well. And I just want to encourage you guys check it out. Uh, they, it really is spectacular. And uh, yeah, uh, real real quick, uh, Amy and David, just before we go. Um, is there anything you feel like the Lord is, has, is sharing with you guys to share to the body? Uh, you travel, you both travel and speak. Uh, I know that, you know, you're probably a little bit at home now more these last few months. Is there a word that's been kind of brewing in your heart, uh, for the body right now? I mean, I think we touched on a little bit talking Mm -hmm. about fear, but it just, um, you know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And I was actually going into a doctor's office with my mom a few weeks ago, and they were so, I mean, they were literally so panicked. And it was just like a a post-op visit. And I couldn't help myself. I just, out loud, I just looked at with this lady that was freaking out. And I just said, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And the whole room, there's a huge office, and the whole place stops. And she says, what did you say? And my mom was like, oh, gosh, and I said, God had not given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And she said, can you say that again? And I said, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And she just went to screaming and comes running over and she hugs me in the middle of this office. And um, a lot of I'm sp- we're spending a lot of time with Christians praying about that specific thing. Huh. Well, what about the virus? Or what about travel? What about missions? What about this? And I'm like, nothing's changed to God. Right. We're in a crisis, but we've had a lot of crisis. I'm almost 51 years old, and we've had lots of crisis. Right. National <laughs> crisis, worldwide crisis. You're the right. same. I mean, typhoons, we lived through Katrina, 9-11. You go through it, and God is faithful. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, we, we mentor a lot of people and they're like, yeah, but, you know, this virus. And I'm like, it is a virus and it is really serious. And there are people that are sick and have died. But God is on the throne and he doesn't want you. This is a time to love, not a time to retreat. This is a time to really, really share the love of Jesus, just like that lady upstairs this morning. And um, I had a pastor come see us a few days ago and he's like, Amy, pray for my wife. These are, this is a strong church, like really strong people that love the Lord. And he was like, she hasn't left the house in three months. She's Mm. so afraid. And she's a wonderful, wonderful, godly woman. And I'm like, we're about to have camp. She came and helped us before and our kids love her. And she was like, he said, I just need you to pray for her. She just, she's so paralyzed with fear. That And so we just literally were in the kitchen upstairs just praying about fear paralyzing God's people, which is not a new tactic that the enemy no. uses, but it, it's very, very strong. And so I just, I mean, the best way to fight fear is with the love of Jesus. You know, when I mean, you look at 1 John 4, just read 1 John 4. My goodness, <laughs> a perfect love cast out all fear. Yeah. So that's something that I know the Lord wants his church to do. And that is, I mean, we've done it in Madagascar when there's the plague. We've done it in Mozambique when there's malaria. We've done it in all these places. And so why is it so paralyzing because of a virus? Yeah. And we ahead. were, <clears throat> like I said, we've been teaching through the Old Testament with our staff. We've been going through one book of the Bible a week, which has been 
a, a really an overview, but one of the ones that I had to teach was Lamentations, which I wouldn't have picked that. But <laughs> go back and read. God really hit me out of Lamentations chapter three, which is the highlight of Lamentations right in the middle. And it says that that's where you get the scriptures. His mercies are new every morning. Is out of Lamentations chapter three. And it also says nothing happens unless God lets it happen. And so our hope is in God. We tell what well, the thing that God's been hitting me, two things. One is, is that a lot of people say that fear is the opposite of faith. But what God's been showing me is fear is faith in the wrong thing. Mm. And we see so many people. I've seen a lot of healthcare workers say, oh, I'm going to get sick. Mm-hmm. I'm, and they start prophesying over their own self. Yeah. I'm going to get this and this is going to happen. And they're prophesying death over it's their own self. Win. Right. Yeah. But my hope is in God. That's one thing. The other thing God's really hit me as a leader is that. In leadership, you always teach people that in order for you to grow, you've got to delegate what you're doing. But God's really hit me here lately is that so many people aren't delegating, they're abdicating. And so they're giving up all of their responsibilities. And doing nothing. And doing nothing. Yeah. And we call it delegation. So that's two of the things God's really been hitting me with. Those are mm-hmm. real positive words. But uh, <laughs> I love it. There's responsibility to this gospel, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a responsibility to this gospel. Come on. And yeah, so many people are, you know, so open to prayer and the gospel and the good news. And I mean, it's just such a privilege. Yeah. It's just such a privilege. The gospel works. It just does. It yeah. does. It really, really does. And I think you guys... Uh, just the life you live is a sign of that. Uh, not just what you're seeing uh, on the streets of, of Jackson, but the teams that are coming from around the world, the churches that you've impacted. I love being your friend, and I love watching what the Lord does around the world with you guys. And so, yeah, listen, I you got a couple of things coming up. Yep. Um, just share about them real quick before, before we, uh, before we okay. let everybody go. Um, well, Camp Hope starts in two weeks, so y'all can really pray for that. Camp Hope is something that God put on my heart. more kids need to be sponsored. Yeah, we got about 12 more kids that need to be sponsored. Um, what does that look have, like? Tell them real quick. Don't just throw that out there. Okay. Um, it's uh, We have about 50 kids from our neighborhood, super, super poor. Um, most of them are pretty much orphans of all different types of orphans, as you know. Um, it's $100 a week per kid to sponsor it, and it's all summer. It's eight weeks. Um, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cheap, as you can imagine. They and stay with us we from just, eight to five yeah. and have two meals. Yeah, today. we feed them, and you know, it's just, it's just hard. I mean, there's yeah. just no food when kids don't go to school here. There's no food, yeah. and so we get to pour the gospel into them and um, love on them, and it's just amazing. We have lots of teams that come and help. People can come volunteer, you know, serve. They can go to the website, all that. Um, we have um, amazing staff that's helping us this summer. We had eight new interns move in this weekend, so. Houses are full around here and crazy. All new ones. And uh, you know what that's like. I do. Then, I do. <laughs> and then this, um, this was at the end of camp when August hits, um, we are um, having a gap year uh, ministry program that will run from mid August to mid May. It's nine months where um, we're calling them students, but it can be anybody of any age actually comes and lives here. Again, all that's on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be, we're using the word gap year, but it could be any age. Um, it's half practical training where you're doing what we're doing and then half classroom time where yeah. people like yourself, either you'll come or I'll zoom you in or something. A lot of friends from all over the world that we I'm all coming. know. I'm coming, yeah. Amy. Yeah, please come. I love bring, you. Bring some crawfish. Yeah. I will. Uh, he feeds us crawfish when he comes and we make him biscuits. So, um, but it'll be half teaching and it'll be half practical and they'll live with us for nine months and actually do the stuff. Yeah. Actually do it. So either they'll, uh, either it's people that are trying to figure out what they're going to do or they really have a call to missions or a lot of people come that are trying to learn how to do this in California. How do I do this, mm-hmm. you know, in Atlanta? How do I do this in New Jersey? So it's a training yep. deal and they also, also live with us. So it's also the family and the community. Um, you're in it. So you're part of the team and you're part of the family. So that'll be, that'll be fun. We already have internships, but the gap year is going to be a real specific nine month thing. Come on. I love it. What a great idea. And yeah, I mean, you, you train up, uh, our Iris, uh, teams. You're one of our, you guys are some of our favorite speakers and, uh, that opportunity to go and learn hands-on there in Jackson, Everybody, everybody, all of you guys that have run to the altar and said, I'll go anywhere, do anything. Uh, I want you to check this out. 
and uh, sign up, run with these guys, check out their website, pray for them. And uh, yeah, I, I just love this. I, David and Amy, I love you guys. We it's love been you so too. great to just pull away for, for a little bit and chat with you guys. Um, I can't wait until I get to get back out to Mississippi and see Come you guys on. again. Come on. Yeah. We can't wait till you bring us some more honey. Amy ate all the honey. I did. I, I, I was sick and I ate it all. Listen, it's, it's good, honey. I will get some more in the mail. I've been Not saying that for like four weeks, but I will. Uh, Willie, my brother-in-law, he ate all of my sister's honey. So there's a batch that's got to go out there. I was texting you like, I'm out. I'm out of honey. Help me. I'm, I'm sick. Help me. I know. I got to see. I told you, I, I, my interns are gone. So I'm normally like, intern, send honey there. Intern, send honey there. And now it's just me. And I'm, uh, yeah. And I'm dropping the ball. That's okay. That's hey, right. Miss Amy, Mr. David, you guys are the cutest couple I've ever had on this podcast. Just want to say that. I think you're the only couple. Are you 28 only? years. I think you're the first couple I've had on here. But the best love you guys thank you so much for coming on coming on hey everybody that's watching this uh like it share it do all the things that that the younger generation tells you to do at the end of a video uh follow these guys on on instagram i know that um they have what's your what's your instagram i think mine's david we will go yeah or just we will go ministries Great. Yeah. To, or yeah so You'll follow find- them go to the schools do some research, give your life away, go to Jackson, eat some biscuits yes. <laughs> and come and come and say hi to, to Amy and David. Listen, love you guys. Love we'll you see too. you guys uh, on the next uh, Irish Global Green Room. All of you guys that are watching. Bless you.